summer anywhere. Thank you. I call Martina Anderson. I'll get a, a last count, Corla, and I rise to uh, first of all send my heartfelt sympathy to, to the 10 people who have died um, across Ireland and to the 17,150 people who have died with this coronavirus across the world. I also rise to support this legislative consent motion and I'm conscious of what others have said in this chamber in terms of the reservations that they have and I would like to express some of our concerns in the context of supporting the legislative consent motion but as MLAs who are charged with scrutiny and given the extraordinary circumstances that we find ourselves in when we are interfering with civil liberties even in extraordinary times and I absolutely concur with the need to bring forward this, these extraordinary measures. Measures as um, I think the Minister and others would know that, uh, that some of us would have liked to have seen introduced a long time ago, uh, a number of weeks ago. But we're rightly concerned with the number of provisions that uh, have been introduced in the Bill and I too, like other MLAs, have concerns about the sunset clause. And if we look at this through the, the lens of international human rights law, if we look at what's appropriate, what's necessary and what's proportionate, the bill states, as it's currently in front of us, um, that the powers would last two years. And I know, like many of the MLAs, when when I first read that, I was somewhat shocked because even in a fast-tracked legislation, um, two years is somewhat disproportionate and does, without doubt, risk extraordinary provisions to deal with this emergency legislation uh, becoming settled law. So I was glad to hear many of the MLAs give expression to their concern um, about that because the sunset law, without doubt, needs shortened. Uh, we are being told now around six months is, is a figure that is being branded about. I still think six months is still long. And, and we do need a mechanism for regular reports back into the Assembly and the committees in slower time um, so that MLAs have an opportunity to do what we are tasked with doing, of scrutinising legislation and measures as they're coming through. I agree with the need uh, of the powers to restrict public assembly and we heard evidence yesterday of a number of MLAs raising concerns of what was happening in each of our own constituencies. And I agree that the use of the powers in the bill that the Joint First Ministers uh, must declare and issue a declaration of a serious and imminent threat uh, due to the fires, and indeed uh, they shouldn't, and I don't believe they will hesitate in doing so if, uh, if there is such a serious and imminent threat, and I believe that all of the MLAs in this chamber would support them in doing that. This declaration can, however, only be revoked uh, by agreement between the, the Joint First Ministers, and I'm con conscious of what Mr Nesbitt had said when he was outlining his butts um, so I think we need to ensure that it doesn't pass uh, its state of necessity. Um, so it would have been, I think, better, and I think many of us would agree, it would have been better if a declaration procedure had had some kind of renewal periodically built into it, uh, maybe every month instead of what we have at this moment in time. The Executive Office will also be able to designate any person to use, I quote, reasonable force to restrict public assembly. Now, perhaps without such a person having training in what's reasonable and proportionate force. So I would say that any such plans uh, to use this must be carefully thought out. And you know that there must be some degree, some degree of training so that people understand 
what is reasonable and what is proportionate. And I think there needs to be a mechanism of engaging with the committees if, if that is enacted upon. And I also want to deal with the area of detention and deal with potential, uh, potential infectious uh, people. Um, from my understanding, the British immigration officers will have their role extended to deal with those who are potentially infectious. Uh, and currently, however, Minister, that falls outside the law enforcement framework um, in, in, in the north of Ireland. So the immigration officers should, uh, be, it should be put sort of fully under the oversight of the police ombudsman's uh, office and maybe the policing board as well. I think that is something that should be examined further in the time ahead without at all interfering with the time frame we're dealing with and making sure we get this legislative support me uh, mechanism um, dealt with today. But it's just to deal with any potential um, abuse of such powers. Um, just like others have spoke, we all have got constituents and people that we know that are truly affected by this. I've had a brother-in-law today who has had his cancer uh, procedure cancelled in, in Altony Gavin Hospital, and I'm sure that many people could bring testimonies to how this is affecting us all personally. And listening to the MLAs, um, there is agreement, I, I would concur, that uh, with all that is said, that we need the earliest review of this emergency legislation. And we need these extraordinary measures rescinded when it is appropriate and necessary uh, to do so. Short, sharp action to deal with this coronavirus is needed. And Minister, I know that the World Health Organization is something that you have referred to and looked at and it's something that I've been following closely because they say, act fast, have no regrets and therefore the call that we have heard for many weeks has been to test, test, test. We need to test, we need to trace, and we need to isolate, and we need to intensify. We're all as MLAs being contacted by people across our constituencies that are doing sterling work, and many of them need that test done to enable them to carry on with their work. And I want to give a particular mention to those carers in our society, those unsung heroes, the care with people who have Alzheimer's and many other illnesses that they're struggling with, people who cannot even, they're not, they don't have any mobility to get out of their beds. I know my family could not have coped if it hadn't been for the, the caring that we got from carers who came into our home, for my mother had Alzheimer's for 17 and a half years, and we cared for her at home. And I, I want to give a particular shout out to those people who need to be tested in order to enable them to go into homes where people are lonely, on their own, and they're the only people coming in to care for them during this very difficult and dangerous time. So I think that all of us would agree that human rights compliance need to be fully restored as early as possible. And so we need sharp and decisive action taken to bring this emergency situation to an end and to return to democratic scrutiny and practice when it is possible to do so. Thank you. Members of the Business Committee is arranged to meet today at 1pm. I propose, therefore, by